The Meddlesome Meeples present The Quest Report with Matt and Richard. Welcome to The Quest Report. We are going to talk about Firefly Adventures, Brigands and Browncoats, which is kind of a skirmish game, isn't it? It is, yes. Mm. It's. Um, I mean, when you look at it... The artwork on it, on it and everything, and a lot of the symbols are basically ripped straight from the other Firefly game, which is produced also by Gale Force 9. Makes it easier because it's yeah, incredibly you, similar. You, you already know half of what you need to know when you're looking at things with It's this. like the same thing, but on the ground. Yeah. Uh, yeah, doing so an actual mission. If you've played the original fi- the other Firefly game, which is, amazing. Which is a, you know, a pick-up-and-carry type game, yeah, then it is. you already know what the aesthetic of this is going to be like and you probably know a fair bit about the universe the so verse. that's kind of like um, you're flying around in your ship doing your jobs this is where you're actually doing the jobs this is you're <laughs> on the ground doing your doing your little missions yeah. you've got your characters aiming to misbehave aiming to misbehave hmm. being big damn heroes <laughs> now half the time half the time you're yeah. big damn heroes the other time you're Acting casual, casual. <laughs> yeah. So there's five characters you can play on in this. You can play as Mao, you can play as Zoe, Kaylee, Wash, or Jane. Um, as we say, this is a miniatures-based skirmish uh, mission-type scenarios. Which I wasn't looking forward to so much, because I'm not mm. too keen on this type of game. But I was yeah. pleasantly surprised. Yeah. And it's, it's quite interesting in that you... I mean, it's cooperative... There isn't any kind of traitor element. This is a straight-out cooperative game. It's not meant to be a traitor element. If no. there is, then you're doing it wrong. Sometimes you have to keep an eye on Jane. <laughs> yeah. You do have to keep an eye on Jane. He just gets over enthusiastic. Um, but in this, you're basically you've got like a, a map that you'll you'll be setting up based on what it says in the book, and in the um, you get like scenario cards for each. You get mission, like a, you? a mission sheet that yeah. tells you how to set it up. And what your basic objective is, you'll have a marker on there. Now, to get to that, you may have to sneak around the board, uh, un- unlock certain rooms to get into certain places, so that you can later on get into um, your main main objective. That was really fun. That was yeah. quite fun. And one of the things that is quite neat about this is that you do have the scenery. So you've got like rooms and containers and things that are based. Yes. You know. Yeah, the little the boxes in yeah. in the game to like hold all the little miniatures and tokens and stuff. And they you, are all the rooms you put yeah. them out. And you get those out and you set them on, yeah, on, them on the map. Show everybody um, who's watching on YouTube. Uh, we'll just have to describe it to the people listening as a podcast. But they look like little painted storage and decorated up, aren't they? And they're marked with a number so that you know when you're looking at um, at the scenario sheet which one you've got to go where, how you yeah. lay them out. Yeah, and this box itself is the biggest one. So like yeah. the box it all comes in around the outside. It's like it's coloured in like walls looks like a great big hangar doesn't it from it the does outside. yeah and you can use that as a massive building and you have as I say you've got your character sheets which will have two sides one is your casual side and the other side is heroic now when you are uh, casual you've got a different set of skills to the ones when you're acting heroic and bad guys aren't going to shoot you yeah because <laughs> they they're going to shoot you if you're heroic and if you um, if you're doing something in front of them that you shouldn't be doing, then you have to go heroic, don't you? Yeah, you can flip to heroic whenever you want, but to act casual, you need to actually use a bit of time, like yeah. part of your turn, to actually calm down. And yeah, stop you being kind of you, you basically got to get out of sight, not be bleeding, not be trying oh, yeah, to break into something. Yeah. You can't look you casual can't, when you're bleeding. Can't be everywhere. toting a yeah. rifle or something like that. You've got to be do- acting casual. So that, that is interesting. Hmm. What's interesting as well in this is the mechanic of time. As uh, you've got a time track, everyone's got a little uh, token that goes along the time track, mm-hmm. and you've got a finite amount of time to complete your mission and, and get out. And everything you do is going to use up a portion of time. Now, you can um, on both sides, as you can see on if you uh, look at the heroic cards, both of them are a different set of skills, different amounts of time. Some of them will allow you. Uh, different kind of movement speeds as well based on the amount of time so for example Zoe she's got on each side of her skill she's got a movement ability Um, she can move three spaces for two time when she's casual or when she's heroic she can move two spaces for one time which actually is more uh, better in a lot of of situations yeah yeah so she gets to move less far but then she gets another turn sooner so Yeah. yeah that's pretty good and Basically, every time you spend time, you move your marker up. And once you've taken two actions, that stops. And it go the next person to have a go is whoever's 
you know, further furthest down, down on that track. Hmm. So it's possible to leapfrog each other um, all the time. It's what happens and, most of the time. Yeah, yeah, and then you'll find out actually, if I do this, I'll end up being able to have maybe another turn before somebody else gets a turn. You can have two turns in a row yeah. if you uh, don't use much time. Yeah. And that is that is another mechanic that's interesting because you're trying to think about how you're best using your time. Um, skill combat-wise, combat in the game is predominant, isn't it? There's, a, I mean, the, the scenarios we've played, there's been a lot of combat as we've uh, it's, gone yeah, around. It's, it's not all combat because we've also been using our skills to say crack computers and hack things. Yeah, but what what happens is that at a certain point in the mission something unexpected will happen and that involves rolling a die yeah. to find out what that thing is going to be and for us it just happened to be that it was kind of a bad roll and it made it very combat heavy yeah. from that point on because everybody was going to be attacking us mm. but it ended up being better for us in the long we run we got a ton of cash out of that mission yeah because it was going to award us like a hundred dollars I think it was for I think it, we were going to get uh, originally two grand I think we were meant to get if we completed the standard mission we were doing but because it went wrong and it basically turned it into a free for all we walked away with something like you know nearly seven thousand dollars so yeah. it worked out a lot more lucrative Crazy. to take yeah. out guards and things like that so mm-hmm. that was fun um, but the combat itself is very simple uh, you basically you roll a die Someone rolls a die for the person you're in combat with. And this is brawling. Yeah. And this is bra- this is a brawl, mm-hmm. and you basically just see who's got the higher die roll, modified by uh, your skill in an area. So Which Zoe's the same combat as the other game. <laughs> yeah. So Zoe's combat skills three. She rolls a dice and adds that number to her three. That's her result. If she's higher than their opponent. She wins. The opponent takes a wound. But like Kaylee doesn't have any of them, so no. it becomes difficult. Kaylee's not got a the fighter. Mechanic ones. Yeah. But her, uh, when she's doing tests for mechanic skills, and that's going to go the same way. So we and do specialise, which is cool. Mal has a negotiation skill, and I imagine at some point there'll be an expansion where we can get Inara, uh, Simon, River. It and looks like there was room for them yeah, in the missions. Because yeah. there is uh, opportunities to do um, that, like that negotiation skill, mm-hmm. and... If they go, these follow very similar sort of skill layouts as the, the characters in the game, right. in the other game. Yes. Um, and Inara was the one with all three negotiation skills. So yes. w- there is definitely room for Inara in this. I would like to see an Inara in an expansion. I would also like to see Inara. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> uh, now, the way the missions go, they are. Uh, individual scenarios there is a campaign in this but it's very loose isn't it it's basically you string three different scenarios together and if at the end of that you and your crew have accumulated ten thousand dollars you've you know you've won that or ten thousand credits then you've won the campaign yeah and you need to pay 500 in between to keep your ship flying or yeah and you need to get intel for your next mission or Or an intel yeah which we did get, didn't we? Mm. So we don't have to pay for our next one. Yeah, that's cool. So it is. There is a campaign there, but it's very loose. It's only mm. in we're trying to accumulate this over this amount of time. It's well, not. Well, well, this story it. leads to the next. But then, but if you're it. a fan of Firefly, yeah. then that's kind of the sort of crazy things that they're doing. It's not like we've got Starfleet telling no. them what to do. <laughs> <laughs> they are literally doing their jobs to get paid, keep the ship flying, and make some credits. Mm. And that's basically the way that the. Uh, the campaign goes together. I say it's loose, but it is fun. Now, you're not a big fan of these sort of skirmish games ordinarily, are you? No. But you enjoyed this one. Well, there's more elements than normal. It wasn't just combat. Although we said it was combat heavy. Yeah. Um, Like, Kaylee was, like, hacking in that room, wasn't she? And, um, yeah, Zoe was kind of going around the outside, acting casual, but she is the only one of our characters that had the gun, wasn't Mm. she, at at that time? Um, and Heather was controlling her and um, yeah it was just it felt like we were acting as a team Mm. and it felt like what we were doing mattered because we were trying to leave this job with enough money to get us towards our 10,000 goal so um, it felt it didn't feel exactly like just a skirmish no I mean one of the things in a lot of skirmish games that I think puts people off is things like line of sight Mm. Especially if you're going into sort of like your war game territory. So things like Warhammer 40k line of sight is critical. Unless you're Ryan's Tyranids. In which case, you're going to just wipe everything. But yeah, um, 
line of sight is something that puts a lot of people off, I think, because it's trying to think, oh, we're going to have to get a ruler out, measure distances and things. <laughs> in this, it's very, very simple to work out. I mean, the board isn't big. No. It's, it's, big, it's yeah, as big as it, it needs here, to be. Yeah. yeah, it's as big as it needs to be. But it's not big. And that line of sight is very simple to work out. And work out, you know, can this guard or this goon see Zoe? Can she see Wash? It's, it's all very straightforward. Uh, the combat, again, is very easy. But everything about this, mechanically, felt very easy, but it was still fun to play. It was. Well, it, it felt... It was easy to learn, but mm. it still felt a bit difficult to actually do the mission. Because yeah, because we were... you're trying to work out. And also, because everyone's got different skills and abilities, it's not like we can all do this particular set, so it doesn't matter who's in which part. We're trying to work out where we're all going to enter the board, what which part of the mission we're all going to tackle. Yes, and uh, this particular mission, we had to all be separate from each mm. other, didn't we? If we were going to act casual. So um, I think that helped, really, because we were all covering different areas. Yeah. And oh, there was something else I was going to say about the, the casual. Yeah, you had different uh, miniatures for yeah. it, didn't you? So You've got one for uh, cool. your heroic stance and one for your casual stance. Yeah. And, and randomly a naked Mal on a rock. I think, yeah, that's for a specific scenario, which thankfully we didn't That's do. for the quest report after dark, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The special one that's encrypted. I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, we had, um, you have two miniatures for each of your characters anyway, and you get to switch between them. One thing that is different to the other game, you have uh, little serenities on the dice uh, for the six, and that's when the dice explodes. Mm. But we also have a disgruntled face on the one. And if you ever get that, then it just means a complete failure. Yeah, it's an instant failure. Unless you have a serenity on one of the other dice that you rolled. Which cancels it, it out. It cancels it out. So um, it's kind of a, a bit of a two edged thing yeah. with the dice. And it's pretty cool when a goon is shooting at you and mm. they rolled a, a disgruntled, and then you can just. Do you a feel a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's one of the other things. In a lot of games, when you, combat ensues, obviously you can attack the other person on your turn, and the other person's just defending against it. In this as well, whenever you engage in combat, it's very easy to take a wound yourself. Mm. So you have to kind of, even though it's there's times where it's combat heavy, you kind of have to work out exactly when to engage in that combat. Yes. Which characters are going to engage in that combat? Because I say you can't bring Kaylee into the melee. Um, unless, of course, you give her, a, you know, maybe the right equipment possibly will allow her to. But we're not that rich yet. Well, we that, are now. We are now, but we weren't before. Mm. So it's very much thinking how best can we use these characters. And that makes it feel more like you are the team <laughs> out on a, on a mission rather than just... Because in some games, you can just take, for example, um, Mansions of Madness, which is a game we love with miniatures. You're moving around everyone's got the same kind of actions that they can choose but there are differences based on uh, your stats and your gear mm. whereas in this that's not the case everyone's got a unique set of abilities it's so it's different to each working other. out yeah. which ones are going to be best to tackle which problems is part of what makes the game fun yeah. and then trying to work out again right if i do this action that goon's going to get to go next which means i've got to then take this into account uh, and again, that's another thing that makes the game interesting. But it's, it's if you know Firefly anyway, and chances are that if you've got this game, then you, then you do. Um, it's it's so easy to know which character should do what. So you're like yeah. you're never going to have Jane hacking into stuff or yeah. or Kaylee fighting. It's you you automatically know who you want to do which thing, and so you, it's not like there's loads of mechanics to learn no. with that. Mechanically, I say it's very simple. Mm. Do you feel that um, somebody who didn't know the theme would enjoy this game? Uh, I think they would quite quickly get into the idea of like space cowboys and stuff. Mm. It's quite an easy thing to like, so I think they would find it a little bit more difficult, maybe. But um, I think I think they would enjoy it being part of a team mm. and do, pulling off a heist. It's just a very interesting thing to get to do. Yeah. So yeah. And I say mechanically is easy to learn, easy to teach. We had it out and going within a few minutes, didn't we? Yeah, this I took this one home, didn't mm. I, and, and read the rules, and then I um, briefly explained it to you and Heather, and then we just played it. Yeah, mm. it was great. It was easy. Yeah. So, this one, are you recommending this one, Richard? Definitely. Yes, I am recommending it. Mm. Me too. It's not a particularly deep game, but it is a fun game, and there is plenty to think about when you're taking your actions and how you're mm, going to play yes. your style. Um, so I am totally going to recommend this one whether or not you are a fan of Firefly I think this is worth checking out hmm, definitely and you should be a fan of Firefly okay. Firefly. 
And remember, aim to misbehave. Farewell, Quester. To find out about other productions by the Meddlesome Meeples, then check out our channel or rendezvous with us at meddlesomemeeples.com. Until next time, Quester, farewell and keep thine axe sharp.